Welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. So with me today is, in my world now, a super special lady. Aww. We're in leadership together. That we okay. are. And we kind of connected in leadership. And she keeps me laughing. <laughs> we have a good time. Yeah, we have a good time. And we had a project together. We did. And spent time together. And we made it fun. We did. Okay. We really did. Now, her name is Julie Tracy. And... She works for Treasure Coast Legal, and she's an attorney. But in leadership, she's like me, the outspoken one. <laughs> <laughs> we get ourselves into a little trouble sometimes. But okay, but but in a good way. Right. But you're an attorney, and I that, I expect nothing less yeah. from you. <laughs> okay. I expect that when you take on a client, you're going to treat them the same way and push forward for them as best you can. Absolutely. So, how long have you been an attorney? Okay, so I've technically been an attorney. I've been licensed since 2011. Um, in 2000, and uh, so I started practicing down in Fort Lauderdale doing insurance defense. I graduated at like the worst time ever from Nova Southeastern University. It was in 2010, and if you remember, the housing crisis kind of started in around 2008. Right. So by the time I graduated, you know, things were a bit of a hot mess. There, people were being laid off, not being hired. So um, I had wanted to go into child advocacy work, and I was working with Broward County Legal Aid at the time in the Children's Advocacy Unit, and I think they probably would have taken me on as an attorney had it not been for the times. So I ended up getting a job doing um, insurance defense litigation, primarily first-party property, and it just wasn't my thing. I did it for about a year and a half, um, and then we moved up to this area, and I took the next about four years off to have my kids. Um, and then I kind of got back into practice in 2017 and I've been practicing in this area ever since. And so you mm -hmm. took time off to take care of your, to have your kids. I did. Okay. And that's a job that you took pretty seriously. So. Yeah. Well, I didn't plan on having twins. That was a <laughs> bit of a surprise. So when my daughter was born in 2013, I stayed home with her and then, um, we short quickly realized that I would be having twin boys in 2015. So I wasn't going to be able to go back to work anytime <laughs> soon. So they kept me busy for a while. Yeah. But, um, but it was, you know, I don't regret those times. Although, you know, in hindsight is 2020, I guess, I would always recommend to other women, professional women, to try to stay connected to their uh, profession, even if they are going to take some time off to stay home, because it is hard to get back in. And that was challenging. What? Okay, so what area of law do you practice now? So now I'm practicing mainly, um, I do a lot of family law. Um, I have always been interested in family law, even in law school. I did, um, I took classes in family law, and then I said I worked at Broward County uh, Legal Aid doing children's advocacy work. So I've always enjoyed family law, and then now I'm divorced too. So I feel like um, it just gives me that, you know, I can empathize with my clients and I understand where they're coming from because I've been through it too. So I practice a lot of family. I do some civil litigation and some probate. You know, when my daughter was in college and she wanted to be a lawyer, and <clears throat> she wanted to be an entertainment attorney. And I have, I have, he's passed since, but I had a great friend who was an entertainment attorney. And I was telling him the story, and he said, tell her to go into family law, okay? Either that or PI, because that's where the money is. Entertainment is a hard field to break into. Mm. Okay. I could imagine that because you kind of need connections, I would think, for something like right. that. But I can see why she wanted to do that considering your background, right? She you didn't care the... about my background. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the ta entertainment industry. Right. Right. So, um, and I do actually know a couple of lawyers from law school who have branched out into that area. They're down south in Miami. Um, and they also were in the entertainment industry in other aspects and capacities as well. So right. I think they had those connections to help merge those two. And you have to... You know, in almost everything you do, connections are so important. Right. So she ended up not doing any of that, ironically enough, but she's engaged to an attorney. Okay. And he's a patent attorney. Okay. Very specialized area. Very specialized area. He's a partner in, like, the second largest patent company in the country. They're in D.C., <clears throat> and he makes attorney money times 10. <laughs> so I never have to worry about her, but she surely doesn't want this business. Okay. But I always thought I would be a lawyer. Because it's something that I had. Well, at first I thought I'd be a social worker. And then I knew there was no money there. 
<laughs> so I thought I'd be away. It seems like all the good, the jobs doing good, right? The public interest jobs are the ones that don't make any money. And I would say with respect to, you know, areas of practice, I really think like what you just said, Wayne, I think that it's really about the connections that you have in the community. Right. Um, and I try to, um, you know, yes, I will fight for my clients, put up my sleeves and fight. But like, we're also in the business of resolving problems. And sometimes, and Sean's, you know, you know Sean at Treasure Coast mm -hmm. Legal. He's well. been in here. And Sean's been here before. And everybody knows Sean. Sean's been around the community for a long time. And he does a lot of stuff in the community. So he's a great guy. And he, sometimes, and he said this before, I think, at Chamber events, sometimes the best advice we can give someone is don't waste your money on a lawyer. Um, and, you know, we're in the business of trying to help people resolve problems. So while we can push up our sleeves and we can fight the fight, you know, I think to, in today's world with the costs and expenses of litigation, you know, sometimes helping resolving the problem is in the better interest of our client. And that's what we try to do if, if and when possible. I had a show called um, Divorce Network, I think it was, down south. And she believed in mediation. Mm -hmm. Always mediation. She was a divorce mediator more of a, she was a divorce attorney, but... She, she focused on just mediation. And she, it's ironic, the people that she brought in, like um, there is a play called Divorce Party. She brought in the person from there. How she, fun. Yeah, she brought in forensic accountants because in, the, in Divorce with Fighting, you want to know where the money is. Right. We're always dealing with finances, yes. Right. And 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 I think um, I think you bring up a good point because um, first of all, there's a lot of alternative dispute resolution options out there. I don't think we utilize some of them enough. Mediation is required before you go to court, and a lot of people don't know that. I'm also a, a certified family law mediator, so I do do mediations, and I don't think people realize that they can go. Uh, parties can go if they want to do a divorce without lawyers, they can do that and they can go to a mediator and mediate their case without lawyers if that's what they choose to do. If they can get along through that mediation, right? Well, yeah. I mean, they have to be able to both want to find a resolution. It takes both sides. But um, but there's a lot of options out there to resolve a case um, outside of court, right? We've got mediation. We've got arbitration. You know, we now have um, technology that we can utilize and doing, like, informal settlement conferences via Zoom. I've done some of those, and those have worked in some cases. So I think we have to be creative with it, and we have to always look at it at a case-by-case -case analysis on what's in the best interest of our client and at the end of the day it's really the client's decision it's their life mm -hmm. right so we can offer them insight as to our experience in the field and what we've seen we can offer them obviously legal advice um, but at the end of the day they have to decide how they want their case to proceed and and what they're comfortable with and what they can live with i think the saddest part of family law is the innocent victims which are the children um and it's really sad because Sometimes they fight over the kids because one thinks they love that kid more than the other. One thinks they can take care of the kid more than the other. And the ones that suffer are the kids. And it happens. And I see it all the time. And it's frustrating um, because, you know, having gone through it myself, I can say even when I, you know, when my it was very contentious, um, I, I always, I never would keep my kids from their dad because they love their dad and... And that's their dad. And he's a good dad. And he's a great it, dad. We spoke that in the green room. Right. He is a great dad. And so I, I never did that. And I do see it a lot happening. And it's very frustrating because um, I think that, you know, it's so important for the kids to be able to have a relationship with both parents. And, you know, when possible, obviously, right. if there's a parent that's not fit. But that's a different story. The courts can only do so much. You know, they do try to put some things in place. Um, they do require parties to go to any any parties uh, to a case involving minor children. They have to go through a parenting course and complete a parenting course online. And I think they're trying to do this, things like that just to open the party's eyes up to the fact that, like, despite what's going on between you two, let's try to look out what's as what's in the best interest for the kids. Now, it's an emotional time, so, you know, there's obviously high emotions and, and they run high. But um, I think if people can get past and through those emotions and just focus on, you know, all right, let's put something into place on how we're going to co-parent these kids for the next, you know, 10 years. Um, if they can focus on that, you know, we generally are able to reach a resolution. Do you think that the courts, I hate to say it this way, but maybe have 
too much control or too much power. Not, in other words, if you go to court, you're governed by the rules of the court. And it kind of almost takes away from you and the person that you were one time in love with, okay, um, being able to work it out. So it's an emotional time, as you said. So they jump the gun instead of trying to work it out, and then they end up in court. And now, once you're in court, it's out of your hands. Right. Okay. And that's true, and that's what I tell my clients, that, um, you know, I always think it's good for them to try to work it out because they know their family better than anybody. And at the end of the day, we really can't ever guarantee what a court is going to do. We can tell you what um, we've seen in the past. We can tell you different rulings that have occurred in our cases and or the, what the research says and the case law says. But at the end of the day, we really can't ever guarantee how a court's going to rule. And generally, neither party is going to be really happy with <laughs> what the court rules, right? So I always encourage my clients to, if possible, right, we have to mediate anyways. So go into mediation with a good faith effort of trying to resolve the case. And if we can, great. And we can resolve pieces of it. We can resolve all of it. We can resolve none of it. So there's a lot of options out there. And yes, once it gets to in front of a, a court and the court's going to make their ruling, you have to live with that. So it's always good to try to um, steer the bus before it gets to that point. Now, there are some cases that there's just no other possible resolution besides to litigate, and those things do happen. But I do think that for the most part, we're able to resolve more cases than not. You know, when <coughs> I waited, we were separated eight years before we got divorced, and we had a child, and we knew not to talk bad about the other. And though I had no money because I was starting a brand new business, my ex, after the divorce, ended up marrying a race car driver with money. And my daughter got everything she wanted, and they would spend the money for airline tickets for my daughter to come here. I still talk to my, my ex has now passed away, but I talk to my daughter's stepdad. We invite him for the holidays. It's you can't have those animals. It doesn't make any sense. First of all, it didn't make any sense because I had nothing and he was helping my daughter. That comes first. And I, I wasn't in hatred of my wife. Okay, She was like my first wife. She was my first love. Um, and I, karma heads always prevail. And when we got our divorce, it was, there was nothing. We didn't ask for anything from one another. When it came to child support, that was an issue because I didn't have anything. So I fall behind, I fall behind, I fall behind. And then um, we would go to court and my wife would say, it's okay. And then my daughter came to live with me for a year and I got a bill for child support. And my ex-wife went into court and said, no, he's, she's living with him. I don't think he should pay it. We had that good rapport. So we didn't have that so and it's a weird way to say it but our daughter grew up loving both her mom and her dad and that's really a, that's the ideal situation obviously right. right and i just think that there's a couple things to that i mean some people just don't have the maturity to look past their own desires and wants and feelings for and look out for what's in the best interest of the children so you just have people that just aren't at the maturity level where they're capable of doing that um, at the same time, I think sometimes, and you know, time takes time, and some of this stuff, really the only thing that can heal it is time. And as time goes on, things get better and, and things settle down. Um, and you know, I think there are a lot of people out there that are able to do what, what you've just talked about you guys doing. Um, and you know, I think it's a combination of some people just, they, they, they aren't mature enough, emotionally speaking to do that. And then there's other situations where the emotions are running high in the beginning, you know, and as time goes on, things settle down and they're able to do God that. God willing, things settle God down. God willing, things settle okay. down. Exactly. But, um, but you're right. It's a tough area of law to practice um, because we're dealing with families and families have all sorts of problems, right? And I, and what's one of the great parts about family that I enjoy is that we deal with all areas of law because we always encounter in families, you have all things that happen, right? Sometimes we're dealing with criminal issues. Sometimes we're dealing with mental health issues, uh, substance abuse issues. We might be dealing with... Domestic uh, violence. 
uh, domestic violence, you know, maybe there's some real estate issues with the house. So there's all sorts of, you know, they're all families that are just like you and I, we all have families and we all have problems and, and they're going through all the same kind of stuff. So we do our best to navigate it and make it as painless as possible. <laughs> but I do also tell my clients in the beginning, list, listen, it does suck for a little bit. You know, you right. can't really avoid that. Um, for a little while, it's going to be tough, but you just got to like push through it to get to the other side. It's so important. I, you know, I, I stress this. It's so important to use a professional to get through this because that's the person that sits in the middle. God willing, they can come to some sort of terms. Right. Not for the benefit of them, but for the benefit of the children. Okay. Now, if there's no kids... It's a little different, right? Correct. It is a little different. There's a lot less we're dealing with. So there's, um, you know, uh, sometimes people don't really even have anything to divide. And in that case, you know, we can sometimes sometimes simplify the process. Um, but, um, yeah, I think for the most part, um, we're able to resolve more cases than not. And then the cases that we can't resolve, obviously, you know, go all the way. And I think I think another thing people don't understand is how slow the process is. I wish I could say that it was a fast process, but right. unfortunately nothing in the judicial system is very fast. So, um, you know, just when they start the process to be prepared um, for it to, to drag on a little bit. Is it broken? Is the system broken? Like, immigration system is broken. Workers' comp system is broken. I, you know, I, we talk about that a lot, the system being broken. I think that there's a lot of things, um, I think in a lot of areas, yes, you know, I think there's a lot of things that could be better. But at the same time, I also hear people say it's still a better system than other places in the world. So um, does the system run perfectly? No. Right. Um, does it always um, result in justice? No. Um, is it built for that purpose, and is is the system built for to, for there to be justice? Yes, I think the underlying principles um, are for there to be justice. I just think that unfortunately it doesn't always work right. out that way. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I think that you know our job is to help you navigate the system to the best of our ability. It's not a perfect system, um, but we do the best we can, and. Um, we try to make it as painless as possible. Okay, we're at the top of our time, so I have one question to ask you because I, I can't let you go without putting you on the spot. A oh bit. boy, okay. Okay, so who's easy to work with, the men <laughs> or the women? Oh gosh, <laughs> um, you know, I think it, I really just think it's a case by case analysis. I mean, I think for the most part, we're really lucky in the 19th circuit to have so many professional attorneys that all work very well and in a professional way together. There's a handful of lawyers that are the difficult ones. Yes. Um, everybody knows who those are, so we don't need to name names, no. but for the most part, we're re really lucky. And, um, I enjoy working with um, other women. I do try to, you know, I am a woman, so I try to refer to other women when possible. I try to utilize women mediators when possible. Um, and, uh, you know, for the most part, I think we, we're really lucky that we're all fairly easy to work with in this area. Um, go south, and that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So I say it all the time. Use a professional. If you don't, it's going to cost you five times more in money and ten times more in frustration. And I think in this case, probably the most important thing I can say is go in with an open mind and karma heads will always prevail. Julie, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wayne. What a fun, what a fun Everybody, day. Everybody, we'll be right back.